Hello, I'm uh, Richard Raffin and in this video uh, you'll see how I made this little hue and pine box. It's about three and a half, four inches diameter. The grain lines up uh, and it's got a soft suction fit, which is just what I'm after. So this is going to be an end grain box uh, with the grain running vertically, uh, very much like this. Uh, the join is fairly crucial and you're going to get a better view I think on this taller one which uh, this the lid actually split so it wasn't a complete loss because I've now got it as a teaching aid. Um, but uh, with the the boxes the kind of fit I like is the, the flange here is uh, basically cylindrical and it slides over this which is a slight dome and it means that once the lid's on or in fact this is very very slightly dovetailed so it fits tightly at that point then once it's on the lid spins um, and that's basically where I'm going with this um, I'm no really for these kind of uh, oops, what does help if you don't drop everything we'll come back to this one uh, these kind of they're almost like little buildings um, most of my inspiration for these uh, comes from buildings across the Middle East or around the Mediterranean various kind of castles and mosques and churches and things right so I have the I have the blanks um, which are hue and pine and these are offcuts from uh, couple of boxes I did uh, a few weeks ago and uh, I've just taped them together so I know which is the top and the bottom and I see I've marked it anyway. Uh, this is pretty special stuff. I, on the original blank I counted over 500 growth rings across the diagonal so there are probably around uh, 400 left on here so it's, there's a lot of growing in this wood. So I make the lid first uh, and then the base. So what I will do in this case is um, I don't normally work with blanks quite like this. That will be my lid, that will be my base. So this goes into a chuck and I need a bigger one. If I've got the slightly bigger jaws then th that chuck might just do it but I think this will be better. These are the slightly bigger sharp jaws. Uh, it doesn't need to go all the way into the chuck, just enough that... Oh, I definitely did need the big chuck. Right, so I'm just going to gr grip it uh, out near the edge and uh, to get it running true, you kind of knock it into the chuck rather than kind of... That's it, so that, that's almost... That's true enough. That can tighten up and thing with these chucks they've got serrations on but they don't do half as much as the corners digging in that's what gives you a really good grip so first thing with any blank true up everything you don't want which uh, in this case is teeth marks and you just want it running round right so true it up a peeling cup make sure the wood's got no nasty surprises. A little bit of chip out just there. So then I need to true up the face. At least the rim, time to practice again and I can use the bevel side here. Just rotate that, pivot the edge the side into the wood get a much much cleaner cut than I do with the, the long point. Now uh, on the inside I'm going to back hollow Oops. and there is a little separate video on back hollowing so that's that and I come in to cut the, the flange, cylindrical flange, with a square end scraper. Now the theory here is that uh, you can keep the tool parallel to the, to the bed 
horizontal you push it in and it'll just um, uh, it'll just cut a cylinder uh, but there are all kinds of things which can go wrong if you have the rest too low and I've put it right down here um, you can start the cut all right and then as it moves in the opening just rides down the side of the bevel shifts the tool sideways so you need to have the rest high enough that only the top left corner is cutting now the longer the flange you've got the easier it is to get a suction fit um, uh, and it pays to spend time uh, measuring the making sure you have cut a cylinder here so these are internal dividers and you let the wheel right out and then just bring it in a fraction so that if it's wider at the back you can squeeze them in and bring them out so what I have at the moment is slightly wider at the front so there's probably uh, a, a, or at least a millimeter gap over on the on the right there so I'm going to bring the the tool up I'm just going to sh um, the edge up again so just use the uh, oops where are we just use the coarser side I think and so the uh, this is a diamond home and I'm just trying to get slightly sharper edge up on the corner so I need to cut nothing at the opening and I want to and I want to see a and kind of half a mil at the bottom of the cut so now watch what's happening over on the other on the other side about four o'clock feed it in very gently And you can get a fit with um, with a different shape flange, but if you want a nice suction fit, you've really got to have it pretty well cylindrical to start. And uh, I like that. I'm um, after a lid, which is in the end is is going to as you pull the lid off, you'll get a little pop. And people often ask me what the difference is between having a lid with a pop and one without a pop. Uh, and my answer is about $60 when it comes to selling it. So I'm quite happy to take the time to um, make sure this is right. Now I'm going to go across the top of the tool here just to get uh, refine the edge. I try not to grind the side of the tool because that just makes it more awkward to use in the long run. Now the idea this time is to get, to get the corner of the tool into the corner I just cut, bring it in sideways and I'm anticipating a bit of dust in the middle of the tool. Because if that side straight then uh, that should give me a, um, a nice clean surface in there. I'll just check that yet again. Because if you don't get this right, it's that lovely Irish expression, a woeful experience later. Right, so this is very, very slightly wider at the back, which is just where I want to be. So that's that. Now I'm going to do the end grain and just need to make sure where I am in the top there. I like to leave a little kind of um, dome in the middle because it just makes it uh, makes the top a bit stronger especially if you have a um, any kind of finial on the top so to adjust the light slightly right so come in. now in the middle I'm going to go I need to have the tool tilted down when I'm on the flat on the end grain and then I can drop the handle as I come away from center because the angle between the top of the tool and the surface I'm cutting is less than 90 degrees. So, I'm holding the end of the handle so you can see what's happening. 
normally I'm holding the tool up nearer the ferrule um, I don't see what's happening especially on the smaller box I feel it and I want to get in there and just lean on the end of the handle with my elbow and that if I move smoothly I should get a nice asymmetric surface Right, so it looks all right. Just make sure I've got, see how near the uh, the end I am. I've got quite a bit spare at the top, so. Battery. Battery again? Yeah. Right. We've been going for a bit longer today. Yes, as we have. Have you got enough battery? I've just been charging the second right. one. Yeah. Yeah, I, when I was doing the books, I had um, had the film on main, uh, the camera on mains yeah. power. This one doesn't have a power, unfortunately. It's made such a difference. Yeah. Uh, What's that and the buggers have mains? buggers have different batteries on every. <laughs> yeah. Every camera, so you can't spot batteries. The good thing is this uh, this video. Um, the laptop shows the battery power on the camera. Oh, right, so that's... We wouldn't know otherwise. There's such a great smell. To... Uh, it always makes me thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if it's the pyrethrums in it, I suspect, or something. Still happy with that angle over on that screen? On, on, this uh, on the here. screen. Yep, yeah, no, 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 that's good because we're going to see the outside developing. That focus is fine. Yeah, no, so that'll be excellent. Right. It'll be excellent. And it's recording. If anything, actually, you know, that can mm. come. We, we need to see more of the up, the top the side. Your side? Yes, your where, where, where my hand is now. Yep, yeah. yeah, that's better. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Great. And action. Now inside here the uh, hewn is fairly soft uh, and it's just pulled out in the end grain a little bit there so need to go more gently and just going to bring the rest up slightly so there's no hint of any more light. And go a bit deeper. Very powdery. Right. And normally I would have had the extraction on the whole time for this. So I'm going to go in there with uh, 120 grit and uh, just needs a little thin bit. Sit, uh, the end grain's just pulled out a little bit more than I was expecting. This stuff very oily, so it builds up on the abrasive. Now, I try not to sand the bits which are fitting together any more than I can help, because that just distorts the fit. Oh, and I forgot to do the rim. So I'll just do that. Now I'm going to use the skew flat just to scrape the rim. Just cleared it. I just, yeah, that's right. Huh. And let's get this. Huh. Strange. 
Well, we don't need that camera for the moment. Uh, although there might be some useful shots there. But... Alright, well, you, you keep going. So we'll keep going with the sanding. Um, why did I move that up? Can't remember what I was doing there at all. Oh yes, I know. I was doing that with my Right, 180 grit, need another new bit, and this time uh, don't need all that width. And fold it with the numbers so it stays folded. So I'm just going to use a little bit up in the flange, soften the inner rim just because it feels more comfortable when you brush it. Just hoping that end grain problems have vanished. Yes they have, that's good. So onto three, uh, 240 grit. I very rarely go finer than 240, but might on this one as it's a box. Right, that will be it now. Uh, these wax you know, on the top, just melt a nice sticky layer on. So the inside is done and the next job is going to be to do as much of the outside as I can while it's held firmly in the chuck. Uh, I don't want to complete the lid now because I don't know what shape I need it. Uh, it's precise shape in relation to the base. So all I'm doing is, is roughing it out. Now my box generally has a bead. Whatever happens at the join, you always want some kind of a detail at the join. Because uh, then when the wood does move it's not so obvious. So I generally start off with a bead and the bottom of a bead is basically a V groove. So I'm just going to cut a little chamfer there and uh, that's that bit. Then I use a 3-8 spindle gouge to start to uh, shape the top. I talk about roughing out but it's, uh, it's uh, to suppose what I'm doing but it's only just getting the bulk of the wood off now on the uh, now I can turn this round in the chuck, which means the top is going to get damaged here, but that doesn't really matter. And on the Vicmark chucks you've got this uh, kind of dovetail at the top, which means that I can seat this in on the uh, on top of the first of the, the teeth lower down. And so just tight enough to grip it. I forgot to measure the inside depth but um, and mark it on the outside but I think I'll be okay here. Now I'm going to take this off with a gouge 
I could do it with a peeling cut but it's much less aggressive to do it with a guard. And if anything does go wrong I've got the bevel resting against the wood. So that's that, and while I, oh, it is actually a bit thinner than I thought. Um, just get the blunt end of the pencil in so as not to mark the wood with the with the lead. Um, so that's where the top is, the inside of the lid. So I've got enough there for a little kind of finial or something. So that's that. Now the base, I already marked the top of the base, uh, which is that bit. And I'm just going to grip the very bottom so that I don't have too much to take off later because I'm going to use the whole of the blank and uh, the less I have to deal with when I'm taking off the chunk marks the better. Right now we're having little camera issues here we'll get the overhead fixed up. So the next step is to establish the diameter within which you can hollow, hollow the inside. You hollow out the inside at this stage um, because if you fit the lid tight and then the blank comes off centre or changes shape for any reason, um, you've then got and you have to throw up the flange and it's going to be a loose lid. Anyway, the, uh, so you, you throw up the blank, peeling cut. And throw up the front. And then you can eyeball roughly where the diameter is. Now the the idea is to cut a steep taper um, so the lid just fits over the end. So it's quite an angle there. Doesn't fit, so take it down to that diameter and then angle the tool around. Now the inside is polished, so if you hold it gently over the taper, it shouldn't grab. But if you hadn't polished it, uh, it probably would, and uh, it tends to mark the wood. Right, that just fits over the end. There's a teeny burnish mark there, I'll just put a little bit more. Right, where it rubs is where it fits, that's all you need to know. Often what I've found in, in workshops is that people start hollowing um, and get terribly enthusiastic, carried away, only to find that the lid fits inside the box. That's not the idea. Uh, you need to know the parameters within which you can hollow. So that's that. Um, I'm just going to drill a depth hole. Use the, uh, I've got the three at spindle gouge here for this. So just do this. I've got my thumb marking where I want to go and just 
up to that point. And that's going to make the, the back hollowing just a little bit easier. The last guy wasn't working that well, so I'm going to use uh, another one. This is the tool I fitted into a handle in the handle video. start thinking about do I want a square inside or a rounded inside and I'm going to square. Now I've moved the rest across so the tool post is more or less under where the tool is going to be and that just gives it a bit more support. Even on these very good sturdy rests you know you you still get a bit of vibration somewhere out on the end of the rest. So the other thing which is a good thing to know at this stage is how deep you want to go. So I'm just going to uh, mark that with the rare earth magnets. dust on this very dusty stuff. Now a couple of other points here um, to make with the uh, with the shape of the base. Um, I like to uh, just widen the, the, the bottom um, so that this part isn't quite so thick for a start um, but it also means that when I come to chuck the base up and this is going to go over a chuck uh, if it's any kind of catenary curve where it's getting narrower all the way around that's going to be really difficult to get onto a chuck and stay there whereas if it is, this is cut back or if this bit's straight then that's going to be much easier to rechuck when it comes to turn off the bottom. Oh, I've lost my microphone. Still hear the audio, so that's fine. You the can. top camera is not recording. Uh, right. I'm not sure what's going on, so I'll just keep going with the. Right, so we don't have a top camera. We've only got this one at the moment, yep. Right, okay. Yep. Right, so. So coming in on the bottom, uh, I know where I am pretty well for size, right, so... Now if you want to see a bit more about hollowing end grain and things like this, you want to look at the, um, at the pencil pot where I had all kinds of problems with nasty end grain, uh, but there's a shot there which shows you how to practice going across the bottom. But usually you can't see what's going on in there. Now I want to just widen this a little bit more, I think. So as I come in, I'm just going to swing the handle away from me. And make sure it's all tilted down as you come into the bottom. You can hear the note change as I get near the back. Oh, it's sounding a bit thin. Right, that's what's going to happen. So, finish the inside now. And I'm going in with uh, 120 down the side. Across the bottom is pretty smooth. the end up and so that will one get the corner of the abrasive into the corner at the bottom of the wall and then also I've got something to go across the bottom of the, 
the inside. You can see a line in there which is a bit irritating, so just needs that I need a fresher bit of abrasive. Round it over the inside just so it feels more comfortable when you're reaching in. This is the blue, the 240 grit. next stage is going to be to um, fit the lid tightly to the base and it's the first time when you can really mess things up. Now just get the inside done first. Because if the lid's too tight on the base it can split. If there are any little defects in the lid you'll soon find out. And, uh, Always hope in a demo that it's uh, this is not one of the occasions when there's a hidden split. I'm fairly confident this Hewan's all right. Right, so that's looking pretty nice on the bottom, and uh, now come round and fit the lid. So we're now going to fit the lid tightly on the base. So got the burnish mark, so I know where the lid is going to fit. Um, I know roughly how long I've got to be. It's oh, it's almost a tool width, in fact, the width of the flange. And the other problem looming is that when you've got the lid jammed on, you don't know how thick it is up in here. So the way we keep tracks on that is to reduce this diameter. And then the, the width of this surviving little shoulder in there um, th will guide you as to how thick it is up in the lid. So where was I here now? So I'm going to be truing up this again just very gently taking some dust off, ease this on so that where it fits, where the burnish mark is, that is where it fits. So I'm going to get the light up a bit higher So I'm going to come in on that line and I can use the point of the tool just move forward on that into the end grain that gives me a very clean surface. Now this is much more accurate than doing it with a with sanding. So when I get up to the end here I can cut it with with the skew point. It's always a bit nerve-wracking for you because if you just catch the edge it's going to ruin your uh, uh, ruin that shoulder. You'll have to, sh yeah the whole thing just has to move down. You'd have to shorten the flange and everything else. But better I find is using the bevel side just get in there and just rotate the tool very slightly and that allows me to get right into the corner. Now the other thing I've got here is this slightly radius skew which means that I can use the front part of the skew and the trailing part doesn't mess up the bit I've just cut. Now, the aim now is to get this right on up to the other end. It's so tempting just to whack it on but you don't want to do that because that's when you split the lid. Now if you do get the lid loose at this stage, uh, you don't want to use tissue paper to stick the lid on or anything like that. It's much better to get a layer of sticky wax and that'll hold it on. I hope I don't have to show you that, but I'm just going on to that burnish mark. Now 
I'm just wondering if this flange might be just a little bit long. No, it's just right. Look of it. Good. Right, that's on. Now at the moment this chamfer on the lid goes underneath that shoulder, so that's going to get reduced. So now what's going to happen is my I'm going to uh, shape the outside. So just check where the inside depth is. As soon as I put a line there somewhere. Yep, that's fine. Right, so that comes right on. Now it doesn't matter. I know the grain's going to line up somewhere, but if everything's running true, that's fine. Now I'm going to. Uh, the base and I want to re kind of have the lid relating to that so I generally have this curve here at the base of the lid uh, that'll go through the bead I'm going to leave around the, the, the bottom of the lid um, so I'll project that curve through there so I'll probably just use a peeling cut to start with just leave that blocked out for the moment. Now coming round the side here um, if you're feeling bold you do it with the skew just like half a bead. Now so I'm starting with the with the short corner of the long point up and I'm going to roll the tool over and just come in with the long point see more what I'm going to do. It's not... I don't have a huge amount to play with up at the top here. So um, that's probably going to be sufficient. We'll just take this bit off and I'll have a... I want to have some kind of little finial at the top. But that's the crucial bit in there and it feels about uh, probably about three, four mil, four mil thick, so just over an eighth of an inch. So that will be enough. So if I want a nice clean cut there, I've got a little kind of ridge, uh, which I'll get rid of. No kind of fancy bead cutting. I'm just going to use uh, a peeling cut. It's not a scrape. The tool's not in pointing directly at the lathe axis drop the handle a bit so I get a peeling cut coming round here all I want is the bevel side against the wood and then a little V cut in here so that just gets the underside of the top done now uh, coming across the top, I generally do that with a, a 3 8 um, spindle gouge. I've dropped the rest uh, because I want to come through an angle there. And it's, it's comfortable for me there. I could do it with the rest up here, but I've just got to reach over. It's just not so comfortable. So you need to move the rest so it's your comfort. There is no kind of correct height for the rest. Depends what tool you're using in what position, what you're doing with it. Teeny catch there as I came into the wood so I can correct that with the skew in a second. I just want to take that round and go very gently across the centre so I don't tear the grain out. That's kind of chipped out a little bit that edge so I just come in with the wrong point. Should do it. Feel how we are up there. And looking at the top, don't think it looks too bad. I've got quite a bit of wood there actually. I think I'm going to reduce that a little bit. At the moment, the lid's popping off and it uh, might be air pressure, but it's more likely to do with the flange, it isn't quite the shape I think it is. So 
Sometimes I wonder why I do this in a demo because it's just risky. What was a reasonably good piece. And I've got a very unusual bit of wood here, so Right, I think it's going to look a little bit better. Right, the whole thing shifted off the chuck a bit, off the um, chuck. It is almost like a jam chuck. Just push it right on again. Right, now I can develop that curve a little bit more. It's just suddenly got a little bit more character at the bottom of the dome. Now this is going to be a bead, but I'm certainly not going to try and turn it like you would a larger bead. I'm going to get at it with the bevel sides and just little bits, or maybe you can use the skew flat. Just get in there gently and the, um, the sanding will take care of the rest of it. Right, this is now not a very good curve just in there, so I'm just going to flare that out a bit. Save switching the lathe off. Now sanding this, um, there are a few little kind of burnish marks, but that'll all come off with 180 grit. I'm going to get, get, get it. It really doesn't want to stay on. Um, going to use 180 grit. a bit irritating this so if it doesn't want to sit right on we'll have it sitting off I just want it running true oh. had the wrong grit probably didn't help either so this is the 180 With here and I can probably adjust the diameter just with a quick bit of 240 grit. I'm very nervous now about getting the lid too loose. I don't want it right the way on either because I want to be able to sand in the bottom of the bead. Right, so I'm going to use the, I was talking earlier on about the wax. So what I do to set it off just build up a layer of sticky wax and then before that dries sets I can just pop that on and that hopefully will let the I oh, haven't got enough sticky enough that it'll just uh, hold the wood and the worst that can happen if it does slip it just polishes the wood with wax underneath problem is first and then, uh, come down here then if it does go straight onto the uh, go all the way onto the flange it doesn't matter that was the blue which was the 
240, this is 320. Uh, I'm going to just do a bit of 240 grit up into there. With a harder wood, I'd be getting in with the uh, with the skew. Or maybe I do it anyway. Just into there. Don't need very much off. That's just right at the moment. Wood has a nasty habit of in doing stuff overnight, so tomorrow morning might not be just right, but anyway, we'll see what happens. So that gets into there. So that really is the outside done. Now the next, so the, the lid fits. And, well, oh, that's very nice. Um, so I now need a chuck for that which uh, keep all these odd bits of wood for exactly this purpose. And I'm going to need a smaller chuck for that, for that. a smaller me mechanical chuck. So all these odd little nubs are meant for exactly this purpose. I think this was what was used for the uh, one of the two little bowls which were done with the, uh, the burl, box under the burl. So that goes on to about there. So this is where you practice fitting lids, basically doing a jam chuck. Somewhere around there. And uh, what I want is, thinking in terms of kind of half a degree, a very shallow angle, so that so it's sloping slightly that way. So I want that in, and you want that rim up against the little rim on the chuck. And don't be tempted, so otherwise you hear the pistol shot, which means bowl splitting. Now often what happens here is when you're sanding, this is rounded and that means that the, uh, the bit which is going to fit is actually about half an inch in. Right, so that goes up and if the top was true and the chuck's true, everything should run true. Now this is the next nasty bit. You can't really bring up a tail centre uh, because it's pretty thin in the bottom. Um, so uh, you've really just got to, or if you do ring up a tail centre, you've got to have a disc which goes out to the bowl wall. Um, but in this case, we'll just 
running slightly out of whack and that's all right. Now you can use a peeling cut but it's the wood's just dying to vault off the end of the tool so it's generally safer just to use a little arcing cut with a gouge, 3 8 spindle gouge. Now what I'd meant to do earlier on and totally forgot was to do the bottom and it's really quite a nasty job at this stage. Um, uh, and if I trued it up and yes anyway I didn't so um, I've now got to cut in here just to well there are two things here going on one is that if the bottom's really thin uh, then I, I really do have a problem um, that's true now I could go on the whole way with a skew but it's um, always much more far too exciting really so we'll just do it with the gouge and then if this does come loose at least I've got the bevel against the end grain remembering the wood's moving more slowly the nearer centre you get so you can't push the tool in the same speed the whole way you just want it slightly concave right on its side at the end and so the nose of the tool is going through the center right that's enough oh, and while I'm at it then I'll just put a little recess in the bottom and I do that with the the heel of the skew sharpen it up with the bevel. Now coming down here I've got uh, obviously difference in um, slightly difference in size so I can just now use a peeling cut so this is it's a low peel the tool if I had the tool in pointing at the axis then that would uh, it would just tear the wood if I had it too high then it's very difficult to hold it in exactly the right position so I raise the handle a bit and it's Just so I can just take a very gentle peeling cut and as you can see you get dust off the edge and again I've got the radius edge which means I can use a portion of the edge and the rest doesn't get involved. Make sure all the chuck marks are gone which I'm sure they have because there was quite a bulk there and you can see there's a bit of run out but that'll sand away and coming down here it's nice to have a little chamfer there so It's just a question of sanding. So back in with the 180 grit. 240. Now when this comes off the lathe and the lid goes on, uh, it's always a bit stiff to start with because the base is warm uh, with the friction of the sanding and so it tends to be just expanded just enough to make the lid fit a bit tight and then I've got the um, polishing it which will warm the wood up still further.
of the green should line up somewhere around there. I don't know, we'll pick that side. It'll always line up somewhere, just don't take a photograph of it with a mirror behind. Just right.